In a move to enhance its defense capabilities, South Korea is developing a land-based adaptation of its close-in weapon system, targeting growing threats from North Korea. Uh, announced by the Korea BizWire on January 20th, 2025, this new system aims to protect critical infrastructure and urban areas, including Seoul, from an evolving spectrum of attacks, including artillery, drones, ballistic missiles, and cruise missiles. The South Korean Defense Acquisition Program Administration manages the project, which builds upon the existing naval CIBUS-2 system. At the heart of the CIBUS-2 system is a 30mm Ge-8 Gatling gun known for its high rate of fire and precision. Originally designed for naval platforms, this gun is supported by advanced radar and targeting systems. The naval version of CIBUS-2 employs a sophisticated array of four active electronically scanned array radars for detection paired with a dedicated tracking radar. However, the land-based version will use a single rotating AESA radar to reduce costs while focusing on threats originating from the north, specifically targeting North Korean incursions. The system will also utilize electro-optical tracking to enhance interception capabilities, particularly for smaller, low-flying threats like drones. One of the standout features of the CUS-2 system is its ability to engage various types of threats simultaneously, ranging from long-range artillery to short-range ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, and unmanned aerial vehicles. The use of a head ammunition designed to release fragments upon detonation will enhance its effectiveness against high-speed and highly maneuverable threats, such as drones and artillery shells. This capability is particularly important in light of past challenges South Korea faced when defending against North Korean drone incursions, such as the 2022 event when drones breached Seoul's airspace. The South Korean military recognized the need for a more versatile and cost-effective system to counter emerging threats, especially after the failure of existing systems like the K-30 Baiho. While the K-30 Baiho performed adequately against larger threats, it struggled with tracking smaller or low-flying objects. The 2 with its improved radar and tracking systems, will be better equipped to deal with the sophisticated aerial threats that have become increasingly common in modern warfare. Furthermore, the land-based version of CIBUS-2 will be deployed in urban and strategic areas, such as Seoul, to provide a last line of defense against missile or drone swarms, a capability that is critical given North Korea's advancements in missile technology and drone warfare. The CIBUS-2 project is expected to achieve initial operational capability by 2027. The system's deployment will align with South Korea's broader military modernization efforts, which emphasize the importance of countering new age threats such as drone swarms and missile barrages. The system will integrate seamlessly into South Korea's multi-layered defense strategy, which combines missile defense systems, advanced radar, and fighter aircraft to safeguard the nation from attacks. Additionally, the CIWS-2 will be part of the defense network surrounding the major urban centers, military installations, and key infrastructure, contributing to the country's layered defense concept. The CIWS-2's development also signals a shift in South Korea's approach to defense procurement. Dissatisfaction with reliance on foreign systems, such as the Dutch goalkeeper, and U.S. Phalanx, both of which have faced challenges related to cost and maintenance, has driven South Korea to develop a domestic solution. By relying on homegrown technology from companies like LA Nex One and Hanwha Systems, South Korea hopes to achieve greater control over its defense systems while reducing dependency on external suppliers. When compared with regional competitors, South Korea's CUS-2 offers several advantages, but also faces challenges. The U.S. CRAM system, deployed in Iraq since 2005, shares similarities with the CIBUS-2. Both systems use Gatling guns and radar to intercept threats at close range. The CRAM uses a 20mm M61A1 Gatling gun, whereas the CIBUS-2 employs a more powerful 30mm Ge-U8 Gatling gun, offering potentially greater firepower. 
The CRAM has proven effective in intercepting rockets and mortars, but its smaller caliber limits its effectiveness against more advanced threats like missiles and drones. South Korea's Seodo ZW-2, on the other hand, is specifically designed to counter a broader range of threats, including missiles and UAVs, thanks to its advanced radar and the use of ahead ammunition. Looking at the Russian and Chinese alternatives, systems like the Russian Pantsir and Kashtan offer greater tactical flexibility by combining both gun and missile systems in one platform. These systems are capable of engaging both close-range and long-range threats, which gives them an edge in terms of versatility. However, South Korea's CIWS-2 stands out for its domestic production and its ability to integrate cutting-edge radar and fire control technology developed by local defense contractors. Additionally, South Korea's experience with naval CW systems, combined with its expertise in radar and fire control, gives it a unique edge in terms of system integration and future upgrades. Uh, South Korea's Saibos 2 30mm system represents a critical step in strengthening its defense capabilities in the face of emerging threats from North Korea. With its advanced radar, high-powered Gatling gun, and A-head ammunition, it provides a robust solution to counter artillery, missiles, and drones. The land-based version will bolster South Korea's defense network around critical urban and military areas, enhancing its deterrence posture and ensuring greater resilience against asymmetric warfare tactics. As regional competitors continue to develop their own defense technologies, South Korea's focus on a domestic solution reflects its commitment to reducing reliance on foreign suppliers while adapting to the rapidly changing nature of modern warfare. While the CLUs 2 is not without its limitations, such as its relatively short engagement range, the system's design and capabilities ensure it will play a vital role in South Korea's defense strategy for years to come. Furthermore, as the threat environment continues to evolve, the flexibility of the CIWS-2 platform and its potential for future upgrades provide South Korea with the necessary adaptability to remain ahead of the curve in defense technology.